Hello and welcome. My name is Doodle Machine. Thank you for joining me. Today, I want to talk about the most important technique for digital art. So there's lots of different techniques for digital art, obviously. Like there's probably hundreds or thousands. When I'm working, I use all sorts of different techniques to achieve all sorts of effects. And I, so it's easy to do the same thing in different ways. So what I'm saying is when it comes to the most important thing, there's no one size fits all, but I definitely have a technique that I think is the most important for me. And maybe it will be for you, or maybe it already is. So let's talk about this. How do we determine the most important technique? Well, I've given this some thought, and for me, a technique that reaches the status of the most important techniques needs to meet these criteria. Number one, it has to have changed the way I work. This technique, when I learned about it, it blew my mind. Like, ah, oh, why didn't I think of this sooner? Next, it has to have a big impact on the quality of the work. I can honestly say that my illustrations would not reach their amazing godlike quality that they are without this. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm my own toughest critic, but I'm rarely 100% happy with how my stuff turns out. And this technique definitely brings me a lot closer to where I want to be with my art. And finally, I can't work properly with it. It's not a stretch to say that I use this technique in basically every single digital illustration that I do. It's just so important to my style that it would be really hard to do the things I want to do without it. And a couple little bonus points. First, it's fun. You'll see, it is fun. It's fun to do. <laughs> And it also works in any digital arts program. So Photoshop, Illustrator, ArtRage, Krita, Inkscape, I mean, you name it. Pretty much any program that you can make art in has some sort of variation of this. All right, that's enough teasing. My single most important technique for making digital art is drawing or painting inside shapes. So what the heck does that mean? Well, let me show you. Today I'm going to be working in ArtRage, but like I said, you can do this in Photoshop, Illustrator, Krita, Inkscape, whatever. Um, seriously, pretty much any painting program will have some way to do this, and most of them have multiple different ways. Here we are in ArtRage, and I'm going to be working on a picture that's actually going to be featured in one of my daily doodles uh, next week. This is um, me redrawing one of my kids' pieces of art. So my son Oscar has made this robot that he calls Bot, and I'm going to show you this technique by turning this guy's body into a shape and then painting inside that shape. So let's just really quickly, we're just gonna paint a regular shape using the paintbrush tool and use the eraser to kind of carve away the edges to make it nice and crisp and try and stay pretty true to the original while also giving it that. All right, let's turn off the sketch layer. So we now have a layer with this shape on it. Now there are three ways you can paint inside this shape. The main way that I like to do it is to lock the transparency of the layer. So under this little layer locks section right here, I'm going to lock the transparency. I'm going to then take a darker version of the gray and I'm gonna paint inside that shape. It's gonna use the edge of the art on the layer as the edge of where you can paint. So everything you do is going to happen inside. And I'm going to take some samples of the various paint colors on the inside, kind of mix it around. And then what I like to use is the palette knife tool to kind of scrape it together and kind of create unexpected textures, unexpected tones, and just kind of give it a, a cool little vibe to it. There we go. I'm going to leave that like that. Let's put on this robot's eyeball. So I'm going to make a new layer and take a lighter color. So there's the casing for his eyeball. So I'm gonna show you how to do this one in a slightly different method. Instead of locking the transparency, I'm gonna use the menu of the layer and I'm going to select the layer contents. Now, the only thing that I'm going to be able to edit is everything inside this little selection. So it's gonna be the same way as before. I'm going to add stuff on the inside of this, scrape it around with the palette knife, but it's only gonna be inside what's selected. What's cool about this is when I deselect it, now I can paint outside that again. So if you're just gonna quickly temporarily do something, you can just select the layer contents. 
Let's do one more layer and I'll show you the third technique that you can use in our page. Create another layer and I'm going to put it in the, uh, the lens of his eyeball. There we go. And the third way that you can do this in our page is to create a stencil. So you use the little menu there and you go new stencil. And it <laughs> creates this stencil with this ugly red color. I don't know why they chose this red, but whatever. And then I'm going to go inside and every, every everything I paint will happen inside, but it also happened outside this stencil. It's kind of weird the way they do it. I'll just try and keep it all on the inside there. Scrape it around a bit. And then when you're done, you can kind of right click on that and go to remove this stencil. All right, so there you go. That's the basics of how you paint inside an object, but it doesn't have to be just paint. So I'm going to come inside this robot's body again. I still have the transparency locked. So anything I do will happen only inside that body. And instead of painting, I'm going to use the crayon tool. And I'm going to add some kind of scribbles, extra textures, extra extra detail, extra, extra effects to his body just a little bit to give it a kind of, maybe kind of a cut paper line. And it all happens right inside his body using this technique. And that's basically it. It's super easy to do, super powerful. And like I said, every program has a different way to do it. I showed you how to do it in Outrage, but you know, let me know in the comments if you want to see how to do this in your favorite program, you know, Adobe Illustrator, or Photoshop, whatever program you like to use, there is some way to do this. So there it is. That's my single most important technique for creating digital art. So you might already know about this technique. Maybe it's important to you, maybe not. Maybe you completely disagree. I mean, I'd love to know. It's a personal topic, so please, I'm very curious. What is your most important technique? That one technique that has changed the way you work, that has had a big impact on the quality of your work, and that is so important that you can't work properly without it. Or do you even have one? <laughs> Please let me know in the comments. And while you're there, click the thumbs up if you like the video. Click the thumbs down if you didn't like it. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. Did you know I do a daily doodle every weekday? And as always, thanks for watching.